Um, I thought I would share another technology project um, that I've been working on in my free time and on the weekends with you. Um, this time it's a Python OpenCV model train layout project. So if none of those things sound exciting or riveting to you, I would I would drop. But if any of those things sound, sound um, like something you would want to learn more about, um, bear with me. This is going to be a longer video just because there's a lot to talk about. And so, um, you know, let's kind of get started into it. And so um, the first thing I want to show is this or actually this video um, and so just to kind of reiterate the, the project is basically using OpenCV um, which is computer vision to run a model uh, train layout so I always had the hypothesis or, or I was always curious about different methods for controlling uh, model train layouts via sensors and, and so forth and I always wondered would it be possible to use a camera and OpenCV to kind of tra uh, track things and, and automate some things and and you're gonna see uh, that working in, in, in a few minutes. And so this video is, you know, when you start on YouTube and, and different tutorial sites, you usually find a video like this, um, cars, motorcycles, people, and it basically um, demonstrates object tracking or object detection in, in a pretty simplistic manner. You know, draw a, 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 bounding, a bounding box or a B box around a, a moving entity uh, and then show that it's being tracked. And so this this was very helpful and it, and it got me pretty far in learning. But then once I was ready to move on to kind of my idea, um, I started with something like this. So um, I ha didn't want to set up my model train layout right away just because I don't have the space for it. So it's always kind of in the closet. And so um, before uh, kind of you know committing to that, I wanted to prove out that my idea would work. And so I did this animation in um, Illustrator and After Effects. So this kind of simulates a camera feed of a top-down bird's eye view of a layout. Um, sometimes the engines are close together and sometimes they're far apart. And this was actually um, very, very good for me to do most of my program, probably 80% of the programming. Um, I even added a little um, noise in there just to simulate kind of film grain um, just because of tracking and contrast and pixels and so forth. So once I got pretty far with this, I decided to commit and set up the train layout and then uh, put my camera in a kind of bird's eye position and I recorded this video so this one gets you a, a little bit better frame rates, higher resolution, obviously way more contrast and pixel data for, so better tracking um, and then just a more realistic um, showcase of the project and so then I use this to finish up you know to go to go to that like 95% finish state and then the remaining 5% I did with the actual camera feed so I'm going to talk about talk about that right now so i'm going to get that started so just a, just a few notes real quick too is i'm using a mac and so um, i started doing python in idle which is kind of the free ide for for python but then um, I, I probably did most of the development in idle um, and then using the shell but then when it came down to using the live camera uh, idle doesn't work with with the camera just because there's you know mac os 10 has security um like an info.plist for camera usage and i don't think idle has that so it crashes so I'm using terminal to just make the camera work. So, so we'll go through that. And then the other thing is, I just want to talk about GUIs, uh, graphical user interfaces. Um, so basically OpenCV doesn't have many or any uh, GUI uh, um, elements. You know, they have primitives like rectangles, lines, and text, um, but nothing really in GUI space. I actually started building a GUI with the primitives and I got pretty far and then I, you know, abandoned it because it just wasn't worth it. And then obviously I could have, you know, used an external GUI library with Python, but I didn't want to add that complexity. So I ended up using um, everything in shell. So it's, so it's a very much a shell um, text uh, application. So let's start it. So um, my program's running now. So it's welcome to OpenCV Train Tracker version 1.0. Let's get started. Do you want to use debug mode? So debug mode is basically either use the camera um, or use a video file. So I'm gonna say no, um, cause I wanna use my camera. And then this is attached video camera. So yes. And then, oh, you know what? Let me back up actually. Debug mode is, is not use camera. So debug mode is basically, um, I predefine all my targets and intersections. So you'll see in the following steps where I define them all um, with my mouse and, and keyboard. Um, but but I don't want to, every time I was writing code, I don't want to do that every single time. So debug mode pre -de, predefines all the targets so I can quickly move past that state. So attached camera is the camera. So debug mode, no, attached camera, yes. And then NCE serial connection, yes. So the NCE serial connection is basically how I communicate with the model um, train. It's a, it's a USB to serial uh, connection and it sends uh, hex commands or binary to, to the train. So I'm gonna say yes. So once you hit yes, it starts up the program. 
and then it starts showing the um, camera view. And so usually I would I would put my hand in front of there and say, yes, this is a live feed, um, but it's not uh, live right now because this is a freeze frame because it's doing ROI um, detection. So it's region of interest. So you can see over here, it says step one, intersection targets. Draw, draw an ROI where you want to place intersection target, hit enter when ready. So an, so an intersection target to me is basically when the engine hits this target, it's going to, it's going to fire uh, a DCC, a digital um, command uh, to the engine. And so normally what I do is, you know, I start here and it says, what is the description of the target? And this one, I want to say speed up to 70. And then what um, engine should this target apply to? So I'm going to use engine 137. That's the short address, uh, the, short, the DCC short address of the engine. <clears throat> then I'm say what command should, should I fire? And so I actually came up with like a shorthand um, for my command. So it's, you're, it's not going to look like, well, some of it will look like DCZ functions and some of it will look a little bit different. So what command should I fire? I'm going to do S colon um, 70 colon F. So that's the speed command, 70 and, and then forward. And then do I want to do another intersection? I'm going to say yes. So right about here, I want to um, do horn on for two seconds. So I want to sound my horn real quick as we're exiting the the station and we just want to sound our horn. So what engine? 137. And this one's going to be F2, which is the horn command. And then um, a greater than symbol, two sec, two, which is two seconds, and then F2. So it's basically turn F2 two on, wait two seconds, turn F2 off. Yes. And then up here, I'm going to do here, I'm going to do slow down to 50. So my Metro engine does different sound to different speeds. So I'm going to slow it down just so it starts firing um, a different sound. So what engine is this? 137. Speed 50 forward. Yes. So then I'll go over here. And at this point, I'm going to do slow down to 35. 137 engine speed 35 forward yes and then right about here i'm going to stop so i'm going to do um stop wait go 137 speed zero forward wait let's do 10 seconds and then speed 70 forward so that's basically stop wait for 10 seconds and then go forward again and then you know what i actually want to turn on the bells just before and after the the stop because you usually see that when an engine is going to stop so 137 f1 so that's going to turn on the bell and then just after the stop bell off 137 f1 and then, yeah, so I'm gonna just add two more triggers. So, so you can see as I'm building this, they're showing up in this UI and you can see the engine it's targeting. So 137 and then speed 74. And then I just have this other engine right here as a test. So I don't have any more track, but I wanna show what happens when a train gets close to another train, um, but I don't want this to run off the track. So I'm gonna make these big targets over here and I'm gonna say stop. This is engine 4144. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say speed zero forward and then do 10 seconds and then do speed 15 reverse because it's going to want to go backward to that point and then yes and then i need to do one at the other end but i'm going to do this one a bit bigger because it's backing into it and then i'm going to do uh, stop go stop again 41 44 this one's going to do speed zero reverse because it was going in reverse wait 10 seconds and then do speed 15 forward and then no more intersection targets so now it says step two engine tracking so now it wants me to draw actual ROIs around the engines I want to track so this first one is engine 137 <clears throat> and then this is something I thought is cool so startup command so I want to fire some commands once the programs get started so you do f0 f8 f16 so F0 is lights, F8 is turn on the engine, F16 is turn on my metro sounds. And then I wanna do a speed command in 50 seconds. So then I wanna do um, F16, wait 50 seconds, just because of my metro has um, some startup commands you'll hear in a second. I'm gonna do speed 35 for, uh, forward. So a nice little slow speed going out. And then I'm gonna add one more engine and that's this one right here. 
and this one is 4144 and then same thing startup command so f0 f8 and this one takes a little bit longer to go so i'm not going to make it wait i'm just going to do speed 15 forward and so now let's add any more engine targets i'm going to say no so once i hit enter the program's going to start it's going to get loud because the trains are going to start up so I'll try to talk through um, what's going on. There's one thing I want to note is once this engine 137 gets close enough uh, threshold to the other engine, one of them will sound their horn basically as a warning, you know, we're getting close. So I thought that was cool. And then you'll see all the other commands start fire. So I'm going to hit no. So you can see the sounds. So the engines are starting up. You see a debug view over here. Frames per second tracking status. So these are indeed tracking with the green. Here's the serial path for the serial port, and then the intersections are basically when it intersects with one of these. Over here, you can see the commands that got sent to the to the train. That's the startup sequence of the Metro going on. And then it's going to start moving soon. There's the all clear for 137 to start moving. 4144 is starting to move after its startup sequence. And you'll see when 4144 hits this section here, you'll see it turn green. Which it's going to stop the engine. So you see 4144 stop. It's going to wait 10 seconds and it's going to go backwards. 137 is going to speed up. You can see here, speed up. It's gonna sound its horn for two seconds when it hits here. And then you'll see as it gets close to 4144, that warning. 137 slowing down a bit because of the speed 50. You still see the warning because they're close. So now they're out of the threshold. The bell went on. It's gonna stop here. There you see it breaking. 10 seconds and then it's gonna go. This one's doing its routine where it's going back and forth. Now it's moving again. Bells are gonna go off once it hits here. Bell off. And now it's going again. And then I'll just let it go one more time just to see the warning again. And then that's it. This is going to speed to 70, but it's already going 70, so I'll ignore. Honk the horn. And then once. See how it got close to 4144, and it automatically honked its horn on that warning. So the, the way I have the warning is it's randomly picking one of the engines. Um, to sound its horn. Now they're out of proximity. 137 is going to slow down. Approaching Belmont. Horn on. And that's it. So let me stop this. I'm going to hit Q to escape. And then I'm going to Stop the engines and yeah if you have any questions let me know um, I won't walk through the code um, just because it's long um, but if you have any questions I'll share it and just from a code perspective I just have two files so this file is just dedicated to controlling the train the serial connection um, so it's all that serial specific code and then this is the code to do like the tracking the intersection targets and so forth and so yeah this is all Python so just from a Python perspective just want to note um, a few things Obviously the most important thing is there's no forward declaration. So that's important if you're writing modern programming, that's different. White space sensitivity, or, or I should say tab uh, uh, sensitivity. So everything has to be tabbed properly, which which is good. Um, colon, so, you know, there's you know, I don't, no curly braces, it's all colon, so that took a while. Um, and other than that, I mean, it's pretty much every other programming language. So I got used to it pretty quickly. So just those few things are 
specific to Python. Um, but other than that, you have all your basic programming tools, uh, conditionals, if statements. You know, I don't think there was a case and switch statement. I think I tried to use that and I couldn't find a case and switch. Um, but I can't can't remember. But loop, obviously loops, um, and then obviously the global variables. And so that was a little little bit different. And I guess the school of thought in Python uh, Python is really you know you shouldn't be using global variables. And but people go back and forth on that. So with a small application like this, um, I'm using global variables just because it's small and you know this isn't for production. But yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.